Pranayama is the science of breathing. And we breathe basically so we can stay alive. Every day we're breathing between 15 to 18 breaths every minute in a normal healthy adult. And typically that's unconscious, you're not aware of it. You're not aware of it. Right. Uh, when you get stressed out, your breathing rate increases because you're starting to begin to protect yourself from whatever the danger might be. So when you get stressed out, your breathing rate goes somewhere between maybe 20, 22 to 25 breaths per minute. Right. What I love about pranayama is it changes that and it kind of reverses, like you're hacking the physiological engine. Your consciousness, because breathing is one of those things that you can control both unconsciously and, and consciously you can control it and it's also unconscious, you're reverse engineering it to control it. That's what I like about it. Yeah, and also like for people who are breathing say 18 breaths per minute as their normal rate, if when they get stressed out their breathing rate goes to 20 or 22 breaths a minute, then during the day we're really only two breaths away from being stressed out. Right. That's not a great way to go through life. Right. So what we do is we begin to consciously slow down the cycles of breath till we get down to 10 breaths per minute or 5 breaths per minute even and at that rate certain things start to happen to the nervous system. So what kind of things happen when I slow the breath way down? Well fundamentally what's happening is the body says we often think that you get anxious and so then you start to breathe faster. The reverse happens is what I'm saying is if you consciously control the breath to slow the breath the brain says I'm not anxious. It works in reverse. It's bi-directional. It's bi-directional. So really, a lot of emotions are really listening to the body, uh, and your physiological systems are driving what the experience is in the brain. So it becomes like once your body tells your brain, hey, I'm relaxed. I'm only breathing five breaths per minute. See how relaxed I am? The brain goes, oh, yeah, we're relaxed. And that's what happens. Uh, essentially, on a physiological level, the, the branches of the autonomic nervous system come into more balance. Your sympathetic system goes down. That's a system that drives speed and, and gives you ready for fight and flight. And the parasympathetic system comes more online, which is the, va the break, the vagal break. So everything becomes more in balance. And you become in that state of relaxation you then are more available to the moment, whatever's happening in the moment. Yeah, and as Stephen Porges says, at that moment when the vagal break is on and the parasympathetic nervous system is um, activated, we're living in a non-defensive mode. So if we go through the day in, in defense mode, we see everything as a threat. But if we're non-defensive, then we're open, we're accepting, we can listen, we can express ourselves, we can uh, evaluate situations and plan better for the future. All these types of things that will allow us to interact better with the world begin to happen when we're living in a non-defensive state. Choice becomes available to you. Yeah. Instead of automatic reactions to the environment, choice becomes available to you. And it's all, and pranayama is a great way to achieve that. And from a yogic perspective, what happens is when you are entering into this state of, of safety, of contentment, of balance, of calm, your awareness begins to move inward. So it's said in yoga that when your breath is moving, the mind moves. And when the breath becomes still, then the mind becomes still as well. So if we're breathing rapidly through the day, even at 15 to 18 breaths per minute, our mind is moving with that same rate of breathing. But as we begin to slow the breath down, the cycles of thoughts that are occurring in the mind also slow down too, just like when we go into deep sleep at night and the cycles, the Hertz cycles, we go into delta wave, which is very, very slow cycles and we're not having thoughts that we're mm -hmm. conscious of at least because we're in deep sleep. We can go into those states in our waking moments as well by slowing the breath way, way down. And then the mind becomes very calm. The thought cycles um, become slower. And what happens then is we can begin to observe our thoughts. We don't get quite so caught up in them, which is where a lot of stress happens uh, in, in day to day. And so that inward movement of awareness gets us more in touch with ourselves, prepares us for meditation, prepares us for deeper levels of insight. And that's basically where pranayama is supposed to guide us. Mm -hmm. And having a, a calm and balanced nervous system that we can leverage some amount of control over is a key aspect of that process. Because if we can't control the breath, then we can't control what's happening in our nervous system. And if we can't control what's happening in our nervous system, we definitely can't control what's happening in our mind. Mm -hmm. I think what's really exciting is that science, particularly with polyvagal theory and some of the other things, is it's coming along and saying, oh, these yogic ideas about pranayama, yeah, maybe. But science is coming along and saying, oh, look, it's that nerve doing that then. It's giving very specific ways to say this is how yoga works. 
And quite frankly, in the Western world, people like to measure and have something concrete to uh, rest their house on. And that's essentially what's happening now in the science world with yoga. Yeah, and in fact, Shirley Tellis is going to present a ton of research on specific pranayamas and exactly what they do. For example, she'll be talking about what happens when you breathe through only one nostril at a time and how it affects the opposite hemisphere of your brain because the nostrils are bi or contralateral uh, with, with your brain hemispheres. So what happens if you only breathe through your left nostril? What happens if you only breathe through your right nostril? You have to come to the conference to find that out.